Welcome back and uh, with us uh, live over the phone is uh, Sheikh Usama Al Guhari, uh, a researcher in Islamic studies and an Azhar scholar also. Good morning, uh, Sheikh Usama. Good morning, ma'am, and the dear viewers. Uh, uh, happy Byron to you. Uh, happy Eid. Eid Mubarak for all for you and all the viewers. Same, and to, all you. The Same to you. Have a blissful one. Uh, so, what is the significance of Hajj to Muslims as the fifth pillar of Islam? Okay, so before we do that, we have to uh, admit that this is the worship, the mm. sense of the, 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 the hijjah. This is the worship brings many benefits, such as the opportunity to correct one's faults and make up for any shortcomings or anything that one might have missed. So if one, if, um, if one of these special occasions, does, just like this, you are having involves so many kinds of worship <clears throat> through which we may do uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some kind of blessing through which Allah bestows his favor and mercy upon whom, uh, whomsoever he will. And the happiest person is the one who makes the most uh, of these special months and days and hours and goes nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at these times through the act of worship. And um, he will or she will most likely to be touched by the blessings of Allah and feel the joy of knowing that he or she is safe from the, 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 the hellfire. So um, we are in the days of the Hajj, and the, the most um, significant act uh, of worship is uh, the Hajj. The Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam, mm. and um, uh, it, it, like whomever can uh, fulfill this pillar, it will be the uh, like well, he will get all his sins um, before given and return as the day he was uh, the, he was born. He or she was born. Mm. Yeah. So these are the really virtues. Uh, there are many really, really virtues in these ten days of the Hajj. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course. Uh, how did uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, perform the worships and uh, in these days? I mean. Uh, talk to us mm -hmm. about uh, yes. not only the rituals, but also uh, the routine of worship during yes. Hajj. Uh, w m m because in, in, our, in Muslim religion, uh, um, um, the Hajj, if you do not, uh, if, if Hajj does not prevent you uh, from uh, doing uh, wrong deeds, uh, from hurting others, from uh, exposing some damage to people or something, then this Hajj has no meaning. Yes, of course. So um, uh, those people who are in Hajj now, they are uh, the blessed ones, and we hope to be joining them, inshallah, in the upcoming years. But let's talk about ourselves now. Okay, so we are not in Hajj. We are not doing the performing the ritual of Hajj. So there is many things that we can do. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us that. These days, or the tenth of days of Hijjah, uh, has too many things to do, and um, we have to, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, to do our best of these days. You know, for the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, the, the acts of worship in these days are so great, uh, uh, so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to um, reward the one who is doing this, even before, um, like, more than anything ever. The, the Prophet was asked, uh, what about the, the jihad? Like, you know, the jihad is the, the, the top of the acts of worship. So the Prophet told, told them, even the hajj, even the jihad, uh, is not going to match the blessings of the acts of worship of the state. Except the one who is going to, like, um, go to get out and go with his money and his soul, um, Bearing his money and soul, offering them to Allah. So all kinds of acts of worship in these days are uh, like anyone can do whatever he wishes, like fasting, like reading Quran, like doing uh, doing tabiyah, like uh, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Any kinds of worship in these days is really immensely uh, uh, rewarded. So the Prophet never never uh, didn't uh, specify specific acts of worship. Yes, there is only one uh, that uh, uh, referring to the uh, to the following day. That tomorrow, Arafah, that's going to be fasting. That fasting the day of Arafah, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that fasting that day is uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is going to uh, like 
uh, forgive the census of the last year and the upcoming year. Mm. So uh, it's up to us to choose any act of worship that is setting up. Mm. Yeah. Right. So what is the significance of standing at Arafat uh, and uh, Mina during Hajj? And uh, talk to us also about the merits of the day of uh, Arafat. Okay, the day of Arafat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is standing to the, to the heaven sky, the first sky. And Allah is, is telling us, the angels, telling the angels, those are my, my servants. They came to me, uh, hoping to be forgiven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive all the people who are standing there in the, in the Arafat. Um, that day is so, um, so great. The angels are descending. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... Uh, reaching down to human beings, and he showers all people that standing that day with mercy. And also, it is not just like the people of the Hajj. It's also people who are like, like we also can share some part of uh, of this uh, reward, these words, <clears throat> by getting near to Allah at this specific day. They will be a lot of that. Uh, we can, like, we can fast, we can, and we can do it, uh, giving it charity, do whatever uh, we, we are to, uh, able to, okay? So that, that day of Arafah is specifically uh, for uh, standing at the, at the, at the Arafat, that's the, the, we call it the, the biggest ritual, like uh, the Book of Allah said, so that Hajj Arafah, like, very much is all about standing in Arafah. That's tomorrow, that's ninth day of, of the Hijr. Okay, today, uh, or um, actually, uh, that uh, day of Tarwi, yes, that's today, uh, people are uh, go going to um, uh, Mina and they are going to uh, get some, uh, some, get some rest and be ready for a big day tomorrow. That's tomorrow, that's a big day. Uh, and doing after that, we're going to. Uh, to go to the, uh, to make the, the circumambulation around the Kaaba, like the water, the water, the water, and throwing the stones, inshallah. Inshallah. Also, after the sunset, uh, the pilgrims, they head to the Muzdalifa, and uh, they collect the stones to be able to throw it, uh, stone the devil, uh, before marking the first day of Eid al-Adha. Uh, there is a story behind that, probably not Muslims, they don't know it, and it has a certain significance because every certain deed and action during Hajj pilgrimage has a meaning. <coughs> and yes, also uh, this particular uh, uh, preparation before the first day of uh, Eid al-Adha uh, has a great significance, which is stoning the devil and uh, yeah. also collecting uh, the pebbles to stone this devil. What is the importance of throwing those pebbles over to the, uh, 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 the place where it is imagined that uh, they could be stoning the devil uh, before celebrating Eid al-Adha. And why does this happen before celebrating the first day of Eid al-Adha? So these acts of worship, uh, like all kinds of acts of worship in the, the Hajj, they have a symbolic thing. Like going through the, uh, the Safa and Marwa, walking there, uh, um, uh, uh, climbing the, the mountain of Arafat, throwing the stones, all these have some... Uh, historic uh, symbolism. So, if we are talking about the, the throwing the stones, it's like just like the, the stones are not main thing for the stones. Like the, the, the devil just standing there and everybody throws the devil. It's a symbolic thing. Okay, so it means that we are defying you. You are the like find the shaitan, the the, 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 the Satan. So, uh, like, um, I'm not going to obey you. I'm not going to um, like go, go with, with your solution. And so, <clears throat> so uh, uh, throwing these stones, it's been mentioned that uh, Prophet Ibrahim, and may Allah be pleased with him, uh, uh, the sitting came to him and told him, don't obey Allah by like, uh, sacrificing your son. So, Ibrahim, alayhi uh, salam, throw him with the stone, and also I was able to go to uh, Hajar, also, uh, she also throw a uh, stone that devil, and also Ismail, so <coughs> these, uh, these things are symbolic, we are mimicking 
in them. So we are, in the head, we are uh, pronouncing, we are declaring that we are taking the side of Allah. We are getting away from the, the side of shaitan. And when we get done with the act of worship of the Hajj, we are now glorified and we are going to apply these things after Hajj. So after we finish Hajj, we are getting back to our normal life. Whatever uh, bad things that might be like going through, okay, we are going to stop it, saying that I'm not going to obey the shaitan, I'm not going to obey the, our, the, the, our, our, our one's own self whims or desires. We are sticking to the, <clears throat> the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Uh, let's move in. Uh, let's move on from stoning the devil to another ritual that is uh, followed usually by stoning the devil, which is the act uh, of sacrifice. I mean, sacrificing uh, a sheep or a lamb uh, that uh, sacrifice is supposed to be uh, taken uh, to be slaughtered at the end of the Hajj rituals and uh, the beginning of Eid celebrations. Specifically, uh, I mean, slaughtering of the sheep. Uh, there is a lot of controversy, not by Muslims, of course, because they have read the Quran and they know exactly uh, the rituals and the right, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, way to slaughter this animal. But some people talk that this could be savage, this could not be taken according to Sharia, ah, and, and that's why we stand up to all these accusations when we talk and we reflect the right way to slaughter <coughs> this animal. Yeah. I okay. mean, uh, it is very important that you as a scholar uh, uh, talk to us about the right way how to slaughter an animal and how it does not harm the animal and it is a peaceful way and it has, um, at the end of the day, it has a good um, message yeah. uh, and aim to Muslims. It doesn't hurt the animal. And it doesn't violate the rights of animals also. Yeah. Okay, so you have raised um, a couple of points. Okay. So we have to water the rule in here. That, that rule would, um, like, um, uh, would make everything clear. We are uh, created by Allah. And all the creation, <coughs> all this world, all these worlds are created by Allah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to do something, okay, we have to uh, say we hear and obey. Okay? It's not up to us to decide what is merciful, what is not. Mm -hmm. We are abiding by every single thing. Ma'am, every single thing we do literally, it has, it, the Sharia, Allah has something to, to say about it. How to eat, how to drink, how to walk, how to exactly. lose people. Every single act, like even how to look, how to wear. Everything we do, Islam has something to do about it. Okay, so um, when Allah tells us to sacrifice these animals, these animals has a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all have a purpose in life. We have a purpose in life. Animals have a purpose in life. Trees have a purpose in life. Okay, all the all the world, every single thing has a purpose. Has a purpose. Even the air we are breathing, even the sun, the moon, everything has a purpose in life. Mm. And the purpose of life of these, of these animals is to be, uh, to be served as, um, as a sacrifice, okay? So um, uh, this is a point uh, that would be like, make everything clear. And we, if we come to, uh, you know, scientifically, if the, uh, there are many uh, research done about how uh, the Islamic way of slaughtering animals, mm. this is the, the most useful thing, yes might be like there's some blood, there's some like uh, splitting there with a knife or so. This is the most uh, uh, peaceful way that would make the, uh, the animals, uh, uh, whatever kind, to, to go through the process peacefully and more than, more, more peaceful than the, the, the modern wise way. So in, the, in the, some countries, they are shooting the animals. Mm. Okay. So this exactly. this turning it with, with electricity, you know, there are many ways that this, this is savage, this is savagery. Okay? And uh, these animals, uh, when, when the, the like, slaughter in the Islamic way, the way of Sharia, okay, the, the body itself, the, the blood in the circulation of the animal itself, is going to be uh, more healthier than the, the, the modern way that they think it's better. 
okay? So standing there, the animal with electricity is going to grow some germs and bacteria in the, in the mm. bloodstream. The other way is also doing the same thing. But when they examine the, the, the animal after slaughtering it on the Islamic Sharia way, um, we found that it, 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 the bloodstream itself is still clean, doesn't have this, it doesn't grow the, the, this kind of germs and bacteria. Right. The, yeah. Systemically, or, the, 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 or, or so, sorry, scientifically. But we come to a point which is really um, important we have to raise. Those people are talking about the rights of animals, they don't give their heads up to the people who are being slaughtered everywhere else. So now when, yeah. they, saw, when, when they see these, uh, these animals being slaughtered, they don't even raise a word, say a word about the, the other Muslims being killed all over the world now. Okay? So this is hypocrisy. Mm, so, right. yeah, so if you are talking about this, slaughtering, okay, let's talk about it at all. Talk about all the other kinds of slaughtering, okay? So we are not going to heed or give our ears um, to those people who are saying so and so. Every, every, every uh, religion, every ism, okay, has its own way of living. We are, doing, we are not objecting the, the way of living. And we shouldn't object our uh, way of living. Mm. Okay? And we think that we have the, the, the upper hand. We, uh, we are Muslims. We have our clear sources, uh, our pure sources, uh, get back, getting back to the, 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 the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with the right chain of uh, command for the, the, the Quran, the Kim Bertin from the, the, the one who created this universe in the first place. And we claim that we are the, 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 the most rightful one. Mm. Uh, right. And uh, th that's great. But let me also add to what you said is that most importantly, according to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is the prophet of God and the book of God also, that stated that uh, Islam as a religion is based on humanity and respecting rights of every living creature, like you kindly uh, refrain to the plants, uh, the earth, uh, animals, human beings, uh, whatsoever. And it was uh, one of the most and firmest aims of Islam is to uh, uh, attain the rights for all creatures and humanities. And from this, uh, we respect the rights of every living creature. Uh, the way the animals are slaughtered during Eid al-Adha does not inflict any pain to the extent that European countries have adopted the uh, Islamic way in slaughtering animals in slaughterhouses instead of uh, sh uh, choking uh, the animals because it's even more healthy and more modern to the uh, health of human beings also and it, and it respects the rights of animals because everybody eat meat yes. and that's why uh, Islam is respecting rights and all in all generally all uh, religions respect rights and respect humanity not only Islam and we respect other religions also uh, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, Sheikh Usama al guhari uh, you are a researcher in Islamic studies and an Azhar scholar. would like to thank you, sir, uh, very much talking to the breakfast show, and happy Eid al-Adha to you.